Hey all, welcome to Share Track Boy. Am I glad to be back? Uh, when one falls ill after a long time, you forget uh, how good it was to just breathe easily and uh, you just want to be back to normal. Uh, this is day four of the viral fever and suddenly I'm feeling much better. Of course, there's a little bit of pounding in my head, but it's way better than all the symptoms I felt before. So I'm back to business. Uh, the last 24 hours I have not replied to any comments, so I really apologize for all that. Uh, but today uh, I want to uh, talk about the markets. This is about the stock market, this video. And I think I pulled the right decision when I sold off my uh, profitable holdings uh, because the market is moving exactly in the direction that I thought it would. Uh, though it's still premature to call victory, but I'm going to walk you through why I feel that my call was right, and I would like to hear from you in the comment section. Of course, I have a backlog of videos to make. As soon as I finish the backlog, I'll start answering each and every one of your comments. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. I would like to start uh, with uh, uh, with going to Nasdaq first uh, because that's where um, we see all the action and uh, even before that let me go and have a look at the futures so so if you look at the futures Nasdaq futures are trending negative Nasdaq futures are trending negative so even though it is a bullish uh, pennant we have broken down on the bottom side this is very unusual but it is in line with the what the other indicators were telling us the uh, MACD turning uh, bearish and momentum being uh, overbought and RSI being overbought and it's all dropped suddenly. So that's uh, consistent with part of the indicators that we had which was confusing us last time. If you look at QQQ, this area of uh, resistance has really been strong. So yesterday we tried to pierce it and then we came down. Each of this candle is a one day uh, candle. And today we have been falling down. Uh, MACD is ready to cross over to the bearish side. It's almost there. Momentum has fallen sharply. So uh, we have lost around 0.73% on uh, QQQ. Uh, so this is the proxy for NASDAQ for me. And now this gap down becomes very attractive in the sense that we are going to come and fill up the gap, uh, gap down. Then the question for me when I make my next decision is going to be, are we going to bounce back from 374.86 and retest these highs? Or are we going to continue to fall down? So right now we don't have enough information to make that call. So we'll wait for it. And we'll wait for the other um, uh, catalyst for this week to unfold. Like uh, Fed Powell is going to speak probably on Thursday or Friday. I don't remember. But later on this week, uh, he may be able to move the markets. He may say something or a journalist may ask him a question, the answer of which could move the market. So we have to look at that. And um, uh, yeah, so we'll wait for it. Now, next, let's go on to look at our VIX. VIX is picking up and it has picked up 1.85%. So far, it was picking up in a very tepid manner, but now it is doing it in bold strokes. So when VIX picks up, naturally, the market is likely to come down. Momentum is picking up for VIX and VIX is crossing over. The MACD is crossing over to the bullish side. So things are looking very interesting with VIX. S&P 500 is also down, down 0.08%. And uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average is doing better. It's doing better. I think this is mainly because of Salesforce results. Now, if we were to look at US oil, which is something I was saying could be a uh, proxy that we could buy, uh, it is looking interesting because it's started to creep up while our stocks are going down. So this is something we have to keep an eye on. MACD has already become bullish, but momentum still has to become above average. If you look at the put call ratio, right now we are at 0 0.841, so which is uh, you know more in fa favor of bullishness than bearishness. So it's marginally uh, bullish, so uh, we don't have much from there. If you look at uh, the number of companies which have got uh, which are above the 20-day average at this point of time, there is still further drop of companies. These are the companies uh, in S&P 500 which were keeping S&P 500 up, but they have started coming down. So some other companies which are laggards are now picking up and picking up the slack while these are giving way. So soon, I think there will be a sudden drop uh, when all the stocks will come down below that 20-day uh, average. So if you look at the MACD, also it is turning towards the uh, signal line and it's already become bearish. 
and momentum is also going towards average. So it looks uh, all set uh, to give in. So everything is looking good, my friends, in my opinion, for the decision that I made. And now I'm going to show you the stocks that I sold and uh, how they are doing. So if we look at uh, Apple, I had sold Apple. It's down minus 0.37. It has been steadily falling. Um, I had sold Microsoft, which I had a lot of regrets about, but there was a huge fall in Microsoft. So uh, I've broken even with terms of lost opportunities, but I'll wait to uh, pick up Microsoft again when it comes down further. Uh, I had uh, sold, I think, uh, Google. So half of Google was sold. It's down significantly. I wish I had sold the whole thing. Uh, and then I sold FNGU. So FNGU is even down further, 198. So I think I sold for 205 or something like that. So it's down to 198. And remember, this is triple uh, X. So that is more drops to come. This will drop steeper. And this gap out here has to be filled up. So it's going to come down. So uh, the bull flag uh, target is not going to be achieved. So I'm going to just remove these. We have reversed the course already. So remove those things. So all done. Now, if you look at the MACD, it's crossing over the signal line to go to the bearish side and momentum has fallen down. RSI has cooled off. So let us see what happens for the rest of the day. But right now, it looks really good to me. From my decision perspective, it's moving in the right direction. Next, I want to look at our genomic stocks. And the biggest winner is BioNano, which is again 4.75%. Caribou follows closely at 3.19%. And it's being stuck here by the resistance at uh, $6.27. So it's broken through its long-term uh, bear channel, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I was optimistic it would break through. It has bra broken through, but now... Uh, this resistance along with the overheated RSI is going to be a challenge. So we'll watch it for the next two days. If this week it can, uh, manages to go over 6.27, then that could be the new support for us and we'll look for some fireworks. Next, uh, I'm going to look at Editas. Uh, Editas has broken upwards on the bullish pennant. It continues to remain on the on this green line, green line of support, which was the bottom of the pennant before, all moving in the right direction. However, it's going to have challenges because uh, the MACD is starting to move towards the signal line and momentum overheated has been uh, almost flat. RSI is almost flat. So uh, I think uh, Editas will move sideways from here and it will be difficult for it to stay above this uh, diagonal green line. It will start uh, converting this uh, line of resistance into a line of support. So I'm going to convert this already into a green line of support in the anticipation that we are going to fall below this diagonal green and start traveling along this this green line here next i'm looking at bluebird bluebird has managed to get into this uh, huge sell area that means there is a lot of um, uh, buyers out there uh, who are able to resist and the amount of uh, selling that is coming in there. So this is really good news for Bluebird. I think Bluebird is on track to touch $5 when it's close to uh, the Padufa date uh, and approval of uh, lower sell. Now that said, let us look at um, uh, Illumina. Uh, Illumina is still continuing to consolidate, but it's now showing some strength and ability to break through this diagonal line of uh, resistance on this uh, large bear channel on which it had been. Uh, and we have MACD, which is bullish, and momentum is also picking up very smartly. It has to go above average, and then we would be good. So I'm hoping for good things for Illumina. ArcG is the other one I wanted to see. We already met our uh, cup and handle target, but now uh, ArcG has converted 28.02 to be a support. So I'll mark this as a support. And hopefully it stays above that uh, because um, uh, MACD is bullish, though it's driving towards the signal line, but momentum is above average and flat. So I think it could consolidate a little bit before it moves up to challenge 31.11, uh, which is the next level of resistance. Actually, there is more than that. There is one more level of resistance out here, which I'm going to plot out for you. We could potentially have a little bit of resistance at 29.96. Uh, other than that, I think... Uh, Oh, we, we have a clear coast out here. So all we need is uh, the momentum to start picking up and we should be fine. PSCB is also out of the bear channel and it's uh, it's had a bad day today, uh, losing 1.78% uh, in value. But the day is still young. It's only 1 o'clock, so we can see what happens. Uh, because as you can uh, notice out here, 
uh, you would see that the MACD is still bullish and uh, momentum is above average, so anything can happen. Uh, and uh, CRISPR Therapeutics, of course, has lost uh, $2 and, uh, sorry, around 2.48% uh, in value. That is a dollar and 71 cents. And unfortunately for us, instead of um, the bullish pennant uh, showing a way upward, we came out of the bullish pennant in the right direction, but we have fallen down since then. And our support now happens to be 66.36. So if this support holds, then we, we are going to look at uh, touching a resistance of 70.68. Uh, in the next trading sessions. Uh, I do not expect uh, CRISPR therapeutics to break down below 66.36. Uh, but if it does that, then I will just uh, uh, buy back my covered call and wait for it because I, I, I'm thinking that CRISPR should touch somewhere around 80 by the time of the PADUFA date or by the time of uh, approval of Exacel. So that's my expectations. Well, friends, that's a quick rundown of uh, uh, the share market from the point of view of the decision that I made earlier. I told you why I was selling and what I was anticipating. I think more or less everything is going in the same direction. However, right now it's not very definitive. The market can change in a dime. But so far I'm happy with what I am seeing. Uh, it justifies my decisions that I took. The only place where I'm a bit unhappy is the fact that CRISPR therapeutics has gone weak. But again, I have a covered call which I sold for 80 strike price. Maybe I could buy it back and resell it and get a little more uh, margins uh, to save. Uh, so that's one possibility, and I'm really happy that uh, Bluebird Bio has gone into the uh, huge cell area and it is sustaining uh, within that. So hopefully if it stays there today, maybe by tomorrow, we'll have enough trade backing for it to break out above that. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, I'll catch up with you in the next video. Bye for now.